Hold on. Hello, and welcome to the um, New York City Category Theory Seminar. Um, this is our first talk in the spring 2024 um, semester, and we have the honor of Saeed Salih speaking and Professor Rohit Parikh, who's my professor, who taught me all this stuff, and I owe him tremendously for this, is going to introduce our speaker. Um, take it away. Well, uh, I have not actually met uh, Saeed personally, uh, and I suppose that given all the political situation, I'm not likely to meet him in, uh, in the United States, but there is always the possibility of meeting him in, in India, in Europe, or maybe even in Iran. And I hope to, I, I look forward to that. Uh, it seems like he's the, he's, there, are, well, there are two people here who have two PhDs. One is Salehi and the other one is Jayan Shah. But I think that Salehi is more distinguished because Shah's degrees, while he has two PhDs, they're both from MIT, whereas Salehi has two PhDs from two different places, uh, one from Warsaw and one from Finland, and both from excellent places. And I see also that his work overlaps not with my current work, but with the work that I did much earlier, and in fact, uh, if I might say so, before he was born, because he, were, he was born in 1976, and my paper on existence and feasibility was published three years before he was born, right? But still, he and I have a lot in common, and I'm looking forward to a talk, uh, since there are a lot of papers by him, and only one of them is being being presented here. I'm looking forward to his giving a talk in my seminar on some of his other work, and I have a seminar uh, which meets on Wednesday mornings at 10 o'clock. And uh, if, if you can talk at 11 in Iran, surely you can meet talk at 10. So I look forward to his talk and uh, I'm sure it will be brilliant. Now I want to make one remark, which is not about uh, Saeed, but about something else. Namely, what is happening with Chaitin? I met Chaitin only once a long time ago uh, when he was giving a talk at Boston University, probably at my invitation. And uh, he was working then for IBM. I don't know where where he is working now, whether he's still at IBM and whether he's still at IBM. But the work is brilliant, and I look forward to hearing about it. Okay. Please. Thank you. Shall I start, also? Yes, please. Please, please. Uh, thank you very much. Hello, everybody. Actually, the honor is mine to be uh, able to speak to you here. Uh, I knew Parikh's theorem, what we call Parikh's theorem, from my student time. And in one of the JSL papers in 1975, I guess, or 1976, where, where the, the year that I was born. And in weak arithmetics, we use this theorem uh, that uh, we, we say uh, one of whose corollaries is that the probability total uh, functions of I delta naught, uh, one of the weak arithmetics, is are polynomially bounded. Actually, I knew your name, and I am really thrilled here to meet you, uh, at least virtually. And I, I look forward to meeting you in person uh, where, whenever or wherever possible in, in near future, of, of course. Uh, well, uh, my talk uh, here is about uh, Chaitin's, what you pronounce Chaitin, but uh, let me, uh, please let me pronounce it as Shaitin, which I, I guess is uh, closer to the original uh, pronunciation. And Shaitin's two uh, HPs, what I call HP, heuristic principle and halting probability. Well, actually, there is a long discussion in mathematical community as to uh, if mathematics is discovered or invented. So I do believe that one, the heuristic principle, is invented by Shaitin, uh, and the second, uh, he claims that he discovered it, and I also believe that he dis discovered it. So uh, I, I would like to talk about these uh, two, two HPs here. The first one is my work. The second one is a joint work that I, I will uh, tell you more about that. Uh, Grigory John Shaitin was born in 1947. He, he is now uh, 77 years old to a Jewish uh, family uh, from Argentine-American origin. 
He is one of the co-founders of algorithmic information theory with uh, Andrei Kolomogorov and Roy Solomonov. Actually, these three people are considered the founding fathers of what is called algorithmic information theory. Well, his achievements or what his discoveries or inventions can be uh, divided to three sections. One that I will number zero here is his incompleteness theorem, what is called Shaitin's incompleteness theorem, that he uh, discovered, I would say discovered, in 1971 when he was 24 years old. Very impressive. Uh, the second one, heuristic principle, in 1974, when he was 27 years old. And the third one that was invent, uh, that was uh, discovered, uh, sorry, heuristic principle, I, I, I would say that it was invented. And it, it has some problems and has got many criticisms from different people, especially from logicians. The third one is halt, uh, what is called halting probability, which, which he... Uh, discovered in 1975 when he was 20 years old. This is uh, how thing probably is called Shaitin's constant or omega number. And as you see in this picture, which was uh, published in March, uh, March 20, uh, 2001, uh, when he was 54 years old, on the, uh, he goes uh, to, on the cover of the new scientist as the omega man. And the subtitle reads, he knows the number that will destroy all certainty. Well, uh, actually, we will discuss about that. You know, he is surely a genius. And as far as I know, all his career was in IBM's Thomas John Watson Research Center in New York. So he didn't work in academia, I would say. He, well, he, did, he, he didn't have to teach like us to undergraduates or graduates or to supervise students or so on, which is a fun to do, just to do the research or anything like that. But uh, well, actually I have worked with academic and non-academic uh, people uh, in the, the last few years. Uh, well, they have uh, the being in academia have some advantages and disadvantages. Uh, one of the new disadvantages is to uh, is rushing to publish almost anything and enormously, which is not very uh, nice. But uh, actually, and being in a, being just a researcher and not having to teach actually gives you freedom and lots of time to do research. Anyway, he has many honors and many writings, and a lot, there are lots of critics. And of course, he has lots of fans, many fans who just believe him and support his ideas here. So uh, my talk is uh, divided to three parts. The first quarter, will, I will talk about his incompleteness theorems. Actually, these are uh, related to my uh, uh, earlier works not this new work here. Half of my talk will be on uh, the heuristic principle, his uh, invention, I would say. And the last quarter will be on halting probability, uh, his discovery, actually, one, one of his discoveries. And uh, I, I do believe that this is one of my personal beliefs that he doesn't have any invention or discovery other than these three ones. Actually, he has many, many books and very many papers and so on. But I can say that all he has done uh, fall into the, one of these three categories here. So uh, Shaitin's incompleteness theorem, what, what we know as Shaitin's incompleteness theorem. I have written actually two papers at least two papers on it, one in 2008 with a former PhD student called On Constructivity and the Russell Property, a closer look at some Gutelian proofs. It was published in APAL, the prestigious journal of Annals of Pure and Applied Logic. And one in 2020, one of my really good uh, achievements, Gutel's second in Kabbalist theorem, how it is derived and what it delivers in BSL, the Bulletin of Symbolic Logic, in 2020, in the, in the peak of this uh, uh, COVID-19. What uh, we know as Shaitin's incompleteness theorem is actually his alternative proof for the first incompleteness theorem of Gödel. It is not a new theorem. 
and it reads like this. For, any, for it sufficiently strong, consistent, and the recursive renewable theory T, there exists a constant, which is called characteristic constant or shiting constant of theory CT, such that for no string sigma can the theory T prove this statement that sigma cannot be generated by an input-free program with a length less than or equal to CT. Actually, this uh, statement is true for uh, cofinitely many strings, because when you consider input-free programs with a length less than or equal to CT, you get finitely many input-free programs, and they can generate finitely many strings. For so for cofinitely many strings will have greater complexity actually uh, can be generated only by longer programs or by larger programs. So <clears throat> these uh, th these cofinitely many sentences are true and unprovable in T. Okay. So uh, Shaitan says in many of his writings that that. Gudel constructed one sentence, which we call Gudel sentence, which is true but unprovable, but he uh, this has discovered infinitely many such sentences. But we will see that this theorem is not really stronger, and even it is weaker in some senses than Gudel's original theorem. In this 2018 paper, uh, actually we showed that CIT is non-constructive. Goodell's proof is constructive. Russell's proof of the incompleteness theorem is constructive. Killini's proof is constructive, but Shaitin's proof is not constructive, so it is not stronger. But it can be extended to, to be Russellian. It means that we can uh, uh, actually drop this omega consistency or one, con one uh, sigma one soundness or, or any kind of uh, soundness here. It consistency is enough to for the independence of some uh, sentences of this uh, Shaitin's form here. So we extended his theorem. His theorem is uh, his theorem and proof is true and well not as strong as it is claimed in the literature but strong enough, good enough. In to, uh, the second paper, I showed that this, uh, this Shaitin's incompleteness theorem, or Shaitin's incompleteness proof, actually, cannot be constructive. Nobody can make it constructive, can uh, present an algorithm for finding these sentences which are true but unprovable. They are actually, these cofinitely many sigmas for which this uh, sentence is true cannot be computed. Uh, they, they, there are no algorithms for computing them. And we, I showed that you cannot derive Goodell's second theorem from Shaitin's completeness theorem. Well, we know that Gutel's second theorem follows from Gutel's first incompleteness theorem. Okay, so so we show that Shaitin's incompleteness theorem cannot prove Gutel's second incompleteness theorem in the uh, actually in the, in the standard way, and it does not. Uh, you cannot prove it from uh, Gutel's second theorem either. So it's a kind of a, how can we say? independent from Goodell's second theorem. So it is neither stronger nor weaker than Goodell's second theorem, but in some sense, in the constructive sense, it is weaker than Goodell's first incompleteness theorem. There have been exaggerations and criticisms around this uh, incompleteness theorem that I have tried my best not to uh, not to enter these uh, bloody discussions, uh, which goes on in uh, which well went on for some time on the net and in the papers and some books and so on. I just list some some of them here. In 1978, Mar Martin Davis, actually the late Martin Davis, uh, wrote that. Shaitin showed how to obtain a dramatic extension of Goodell's incompleteness theorem. You can find this in his uh, paper called What is a Computation? Actually, this uh, paper has appeared in many books. In the first appearance, it, this uh, sentence appears on page 26, uh, 265. In 1986, Shaitin repeats Davis' claim. And he, he wrote, as he wrote that this it means that his incompleteness theorem is a dramatic extension of Goodell's theorem, which I showed in those papers that is not true. 
is not any extension of Gödel's incompleteness theorem. Russell's theorem is an extension of Gödel's theorem because it uh, avoids omega consistency or sigma one consistency, and we can, in a sense, uh, make some uh, modification to Schrödinger's proof to make it Russellian, but in a non-constructive way. Uh, and besides that being constructive, yes. I mean, yes. he, he does prove more than one statement is is incomplete. So in that no, sense, no, no. it is stronger. No, no, he proves that there are, there are, but he cannot show not, uh, which one of them. There are infinitely many true and unprovable sentences, but this already follows from Goodell's theorem. Go like this, you take T, you take consistency of T, it is independent, okay? Right. You take consistency of T plus consistency of T. Another sentence, which is stronger, different, and true and unprovable. Again, T plus con T plus con con T, and so on. So, the, so Goodell's first incompleteness theorem, the proof presents just one Goodellian sentence, but you can repeat it to get infinitely many uh, independent sentences. You're right. Well, right, one can say that, yes, Shaitin gives these infinitely many sentences in one breath, in, with one shot. But this doesn't mean that it is stronger. It is highly non-constructive. Goodell's uh, actually proof can be repeated infinitely many times, but can give you constructively, in a constructive way, infinitely many independent sentences, true but unprovable sentences. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And in 1988, Jan Stewart, one of my favorite uh, writers, actually, I, I love his books, wrote in Nature that Scheitin has proved the ultimate in undecidability theorems that the logical structures of arithmetic can be random, which is an unfortunate, actually. And also Scheitin in 1989 again repeats that, I have shown that God plays dice in pure mathematics. My work is a fundamental extension of the work of Goodell and Turing on undecidability in pure mathematics. Actually, unfortunately, I would say a genius like, I, I do believe that he, he's a genius. Scheitin uh, likes very much to compare his works with Goodell and Turing. And in many places say that Goodell and I did this, Turing and I did this, I did this, Turing did that, and my work is this, and the Turing works is that, and so on. And there have been lots of criticism, actually. The most famous ones are these, uh, I have listed are these fours. In 1989, von Lombalken wrote in JSL, the, this uh, paper, Algorithmic Information Theory, which is really informative, actually, uh, even fun to read. Fallis wrote in Philosophy and Mathematica, the source of Scheitin's incorrectness. And Ratikainen actually wrote uh, some, also some other papers on Scheitin's interpretations and Scheitin's philosophy and so on. The two of the prominent ones are this one in the Journal of Philosophical Logic on interpreting Scheitin's incompleteness theorem and algorithmic information theory and undecidability in the journal Santes. So, for example, if you click on this, uh, actually, uh, these slides are uh, available in my homepage. If you click on this, you will see that uh, there is a book called Conversations with a Mathematician, in, for which the publisher, Springer Verlag, writes that, written by the author of the best uh, trilogy, The Limits of Mathematics, The Unknowable, and, uh, and ex Exploring Randomness. Actually, he has uh, very many books, and these are just three of them. A collection of interviews with Greg Scheitin the creator of algorithmic information theory. And again, uh, in one of the lectures of this uh, uh, book, you can uh, read that, uh, that he writes in the abstract that I have shown that God does not only place, not only plays dice in physics, but even in pure mathematics, in elementary number theory, in arithmetic. My work is a fundamental extension of the work of Goodell and Turing on undecidability in pure mathematics. I show that not only does undecidability occur, but in fact, sometimes there is complete randomness and mathematical proofs becomes a perfect coin toss, which, has, which are not unfortunately uh, supported by scientific evidence. Anyway, uh, actually yeah, my... Uh, point. Yeah. Uh, yes. That it is one of your lines says that Chaitin is the creator of algorithmic information theory, but 
There are two other people I can think of who have played a role. One of them, of course, is Komogorov, and the other one is Leonid Levin. Now, I don't know the dates of these, these people exactly, but uh, uh, maybe talk, calling him a creator is slightly an exaggeration. I don't know. Well, yes, actually, uh, these uh, these words are written by the Springer publisher, not by Scheiten himself. And yeah. yes, I, I would say that uh, actually, uh, yes, you mentioned uh, Levin, right? I, I had forgotten that, but I checked on the Wikipedia, in the, in the Wikipedia article, which does not need to be correct or uh, exact, that uh, the, the creators of algorithmic information theory are three people, Kolmogorov, Solomonov, and uh, Chaitin, and as you said, maybe also Levin too, because I have seen his papers and so on. But I don't know who created or who, uh, uh, which team created algorithmic information theory, but calling just one person, yes, it is just, uh, it is not very nice. Uh, actually, it, it, it doesn't, it, it is not very fair, I, I would say. But anyway, th th that is not my issue actually here. Uh, uh, actually, I have much more serious concerns or uh, scientific concerns about that. And uh, actually, okay, a, a quarter of my talk is past now. So the, uh, the main half of my talk uh, starts here. Uh, I have done uh, actually two works, one is joint work and uh, uh, one uh, single one on heuristic principle and halting probability. Since I am not a probability theorist, theorist, I cannot put, I could not put this paper on archive. Okay, I am just a logician, so I can put papers on logic or maybe computer science also sometimes computer science and logic. So, but for putting papers on problem theory, I should ask some problem theorists to uh, what they say uh, at those indoors me. Okay, so that I can put papers on archive. Anyway, anyway, uh, I just actually uh, merge them and put one paper on Scheiting's heuristic principle and halting probability on in archive, which has two parts. Okay, the second part is a joint work here, and I will talk about uh, these two parts here. And I encourage, I strongly encourage uh, you to uh, consult this paper or have a look at this paper, but I will not spoil it actually. I will talk about things that I cannot write in, in, in that paper. But anyway, you will not lose anything if you, don't, uh, if, if you don't listen to this talk and just read that, or just listen to, the one, to, to this one and don't read that anyway. They just come, uh, I have tried to uh, make it uh, in a way that uh, my talk and that paper complement each other. So Scheiting heuristic principle says that greater comp complexity implies unprovability. If a sentence is more complex or heavier than the theory, then that sentence is unprovable from that theory. So he links unprovability with higher complexity and claims that the incompleteness, this unprovability of true sentences, comes from the low uh, complexity of theories and high complexity of those sentences. So, uh, uh, I assume that you know what probability or unprovability means. These are just some examples from arithmetic and geometry. For example, in arithmetic, we know that Pierre Dorferema proved that there are no uh, non-zero numbers x, y, z such that x4 plus 5 y4 is equals to z2. Okay. Uh, we, we know that he proved that, and this is a generalization of uh, Pythagoras uh, equation that x2 plus y2 is z2. So he made it for, uh, he proved that for the power 4, x4 plus y4 equals to z4. This has no uh, non zero, no non trivial solutions. If we just uh, add one uh, to one uh, to one side of this equation, we get, for example, this equation x4 plus y4 is z2 plus 1. And uh, if we uh, want to know if they have uh, uh, non-trivial solutions, there are x, y, z such that uh, greater than one such that they satisfy this equation, 
Then we can do a computer search, uh, which shows that, yes, there are such, such X and Y, Z, for example, X5, Y, C1, and Z55. For, for so arithmetic proves that there are X, Y, Z greater than one, which satisfy this equation. And if we add one to the other side of the equation, then we get a sentence which says that there are X and X, Y, Z, such that none of them is zero, and they satisfy this equation. And as far as I, I searched the net, and uh, actually, I, uh, they, they have been, but there is no more, you, you can search the archive of the net, discussions on, on this, that this is still an open problem. We don't know if the, there are such X and y, X, y, Z or not. And the computer search uh, haven't shown any result or any proof that, that we can prove it or disprove it. So it is not easy to, to just uh, say that we, when we, we write a sentence and then we can prove it or disprove it in arithmetic. In arithmetic, we have lots of lots of uh, open uh, problems. Or for example, in geometry, we, we know th this from high school that in a triangle ABC, if two sides are equal, then two uh, angles are equal and vice versa, conversely. If two angles are equal, then two sides are equal. Uh, let's see a proof of this. For example, if AB and AC are equal, then we draw the internal angle bisector, okay? Then we get two, triangle, two triangles which are equ uh, actually equivalent to each other by the side angle side case. So these two equivalent triangles uh, have two, should have two equal angles. So B and C should equal. And conversely, if B and C are equal, then we draw the altitude here. Then we get to uh, right triangles. And uh, since A1 is the complement of B and A2 is the complement of C, then A1 and A2 are equal. So these two triangles are equal by the angle side angle case. And then AB should be equal to AC, this high school proof here. But we know that in arithmetic, we cannot prove that one is equal to two. If well, uh, we should not be able to prove this, or in geometry we cannot prove that every uh, triangle is uh, isosceles, uh, every two sides are equal. So if there is uh, some proof uh, we, uh, or uh, some demonstration, we should know that there is something wrong. We you you have seen this on the net or in the, in high school that they prove that two equals to one and there is something wrong in between. One of the steps is wrong here. Or also there is a kind of a semi-proof or sort of proof that all triangles are uh, isosceles. Actually, there is a uh, actually link here by in uh, Joel Hamkins' uh, website that all triangles are isosceles, and, and and there is a kind of proof which is wrong here. So we know that in geometry doesn't prove this. Okay, and if there is a proof, there is something wrong with it. So I do not go to into uh, the details of this one. Now that we, we know what proof and what uh, provability and what unprovability is, let's look at this uh, Kolmogorov complexity. This is called sometimes Kolmogorov complexity, sometimes Kol Kolmogorov Scheiten complexity, sometimes Solomonov Kolmogorov Scheiten complexity, but let's call it program size complexity. The program size complexity of X is the length of the shortest input free program that outputs only X and then it stops. Okay, this is input free program. If, if it uh, starts, it just runs, outputs X, prints X, and then stops here. And I have two examples here. For example, the first one is one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, and so on. The second is one, uh, zero, one, two, zero, one, three, zero, one, four, zero, and so on. So you see that this is more complex than this one. So the uh, actually the shortest input three program that uh, prints out this should be much uh, smaller than the shortest free input three program that prints this one. And again, I do not go into details here. You, you, uh, you, you see that uh, if, if you ignore this input n here, if n is fixed, then you can print this one with a very short input free program, one zero, one zero, n times. But for this one, you need a, a little bit more complicated algorithm. Uh, you should write one zero, one two zero, one three zero, and so on. So it needs more work and more uh, computational uh, resources. 
and uh, programming skills. And uh, there, there are more examples here. Uh, uh, this is also called the descriptive complexity. If you look at this string, you, you see that it is very simple. One, 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 all one. You can write a program that prints this. Okay, it's very easy. And this is just a bit uh, complex, uh, more complex than this one, but not much. One, two, zero, one, two, zero, one, two, zero, one, two, zero and so on. This is more complicated, 0, 1, 0, 2, 1, 0, 3, 1, 0, 4, 1, and so on. Again, there are a, there is a program which prints this out. And this one, 0, 1, 0, uh, 4, 1, 0, 1, 0, 5, 1, 0, 9, 1, 0, 2, 1, and so on. Well, this uh, has a formula here. Uh, we have 0, and the number of 1s are the decimal expansions of the number pi. Well, there is a, still a program which prints this one, and uh, a rather short one, not, not very long. Of, of course, this is more, much more complicated than the previous uh, strings, but it is still uh, uh, say manageable. We can write a reasonably short program which prints this one. And I have written this very randomly. Well, if you see pattern here, well, uh, if it goes forever, well, you, you may lose that pattern here. This is very, very random here. I, I have no formula and no algorithm in mind for generating this. So we have a good definition here, randomness. A random number or a random string, or a random string is the one whose program size, the, uh, the length of the shor shortest input free program that outputs it, Program size complexity is almost its length. So if you want to print this out, you have to print this uh, like that. You, you just have to write one, one, zero, 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 one, one, and so on. Because there is no program or no pattern or no uh, clear or no shorter algorithm to generate this long string here. So this uh, complexity uh, can be applied to sentences and theories also. This was uh, Shaitin's idea. So for example, this sentence uh, here is true and provable in arithmetic. Uh, there are uh, non-zero x, y, z such that x2 plus y2 is z2. And we know that the smallest uh, num uh, solution is this three, four, five here. And this is Euler's theorem that there is no uh, non-zero x, y, z which satisfies this equation with the power three, x3 plus y3 is z3, or for the power four, this is Fermat's theorem. And this is much more uh, complex here, which says that for all n greater than two, there are no non-zero x, y, z, which satisfies this Fermat's equation, x, n plus y, n is z, n. So you see that this sentence is, is much more complex than, or much more complicated than these uh, previous ones. Also in geometry, in geometry, we have a theorem which says that in any triangle, the uh, medians are concurrent, they uh, conquer at the centroid. Altitudes are concurrent at the orthocenter. And there is a circumcenter of it, any uh, triangle, which uh, has equal distances from the three vertices of the triangle. Now, uh, this sentence, uh, which is much more complicated uh, that, than the other ones, it says that for every triangle, this uh, centroid, orthocenter, and circumcenter are either identical when the uh, when the triangle is equilateral, or they lie on a line. They they all uh, they don't form a triangle. They are all in a line, which is called Euler lines here. So we, we see that this is much more complicated than the previous ones. And what, uh, uh, again, heuristic principle says, it, it says that complicated sentences are not provable from uh, uncomplicated or simpler theories. Well, I have put it in the form of a definition, a mapping or a weighting from theories and sentences to real, the real numbers satisfies HP, Scheidman's heuristic principle, when for every theory T and every sentence psi, we have that if sen the sentence is more complicated than the theory, then the theory cannot prove that sentence. Or by contraposition, this equivalent says that if psi is provable from T, then the weight of psi is less than or equal to the weight of T. 
Shark is original idea was that this pro program size complexity satisfies this principle, but it is wrong, unfortunately. There have been lots of criticisms in the literature that I showed some of them here. So what happened next? Uh, actually, some built their own partial weightings, which uh, satisfy this heuristic principle, and some fans, or <clears throat> I would say, the ones who love this uh, HP or Shaitan's idea came to rescue, but unsuccessfully, unfortunately. So uh, uh, here I, I can say that a heuristic principle is a kind of lost paradise. The criticisms uh, that uh, Shaitan's claim received used kind of these examples. For very complex sentences, S and S prime, you see these phones show that these sentences are very complex, or complex numbers, N and N prime. The following complicated sentences are provable. S implies S. This is a tautology. Since S is complex, very complicated, then S implies S is also complicated, but it is a tautology. It is provable in every theory. So we cannot say that more complex sentences do not follow from theories. They follow. They, they may follow. Or these sentences, S and S prime, implies S prime and S, and so on, similar ones. Uh, actually, in 2005, Karyod and Jorgensen claimed that they have rescued Shaitin's claim with a new complexity, Cx, the program size complexity, minus the length of x. This was uh, actually designed uh, cleverly because it excluded all these examples in the literature. But the proof had something wrong and, and uh, it was not difficult to, uh, it was not easy. It was not easy to find it. Actually, for some time in 2005, I believe that yes, okay, this uh, HP holds for this uh, complexity and uh, everything was okay. But then later I saw in the literature that uh, in, in some uh, even master thesis that people are, uh, uh, are doubting this claim and even some people <clears throat> design their own weighting that uh, they, they hope that they satisfy HP, Shaitin's HP. So my paper that I showed you, the first one starts from this one, starts from creating counter example to this claim that no, this sentence, falsum implies S for complicated S is a tautology, but it has a low, uh, it has high delta complexity. S implies true, or P implies, S implies P for a simple P, but very complicated S. So what are the differences? You see that S here appears two times, also S prime, also N, so, uh, and also N prime. But here S appears once. So if you can find a tautology in which a sentence appears only once, but that sentence is very complex, this is a counterexample for this uh, Delta complexity, so-called delta complexity. So Shaitin's uh, heuristic principle does not hold for this complexity either, unfortunately. And also here, for example, n is greater than zero. This, it, 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 this complexity excludes this counterexample, but cannot exclude this one. So the trick was to find a, a tautology, a, a true formula which uh, has just one complexity sentence or one complex element inside it. So for that, uh, I considered the uh, converse of HP by noting that this heuristic principle, actually, uh, I didn't see that people, uh, well, I didn't notice that people noticed it in the literature, but maybe it was too easy, nobody mentioned it, that this HP can be satisfied by any constant weighting. Just put uh, the weight of every sentence and, and every theory to be one, for example, or to be two. But this holds trivially because all the weights are equal to each other. Okay, but, but this is not interesting, of course. So let's consider the converse of HP, which says that uh, if a theory is more complex or heavier than the sentence, that theory should prove that sentence. This cannot hold for real valued weights. Since every two real numbers are comparable, 
if you have two real numbers, A and B, one of them is uh, old, either they're equivalent or uh, one of them is uh, greater than the other. But there are some theories and sentences which are incomparable. None of them proves the other. For example, take psi, which is non-provable and non-refutable, and not psi. Psi does not imply not psi because uh, psi is not refutable. Not psi doesn't imply psi because psi is not provable. Like any atom in proportional logic or this sentence in first order logic. So it doesn't imply its uh, negation and its negation doesn't imply this one. So we have incomparable <coughs> sentences, but if they have weight, okay, their weight are comparable. So the weight of one of them is uh, greater than or equal to the weight of the other, but none of them uh, proves the other. So HP minus uh, doesn't work, but both of them can, uh, may hold for non-real valued weightings that we will see one of them here. So I considered EP equivalent, I called it equivalence principle, which is a weak consequence of HP minus. It says that if two theories have equal weight, they are logically equivalent. So only equivalent theories get the same weight. And then the main, uh, my main theorem is that, yes, there exist some real valued weightings that satisfy bo both HP and EP. They cannot satisfy HP and HP minus, but they can satisfy HP and EP. And they, can be, uh, they cannot be computable if the logic is undecidable like set theory, like arithmetic, okay? But for decidable logics, propositional logic, monadic first order logic, or geometry, uh, real closed fields, or so on, there are computable weightings that satisfy HP and EP. So computability of this weighting depends on the decidability of the logic. And the proof goes like this. So I want to give you a glimpse of the proof. You enumerate, effectively enumerate all the sentences and you weight sentences by their probability, uh, by their proof power, okay? Like this, psi n t is zero if t uh, cannot uh, prove psi n and it is one if t can prove psi n. Before uh, giving to the weight, uh, let's, uh, have the let me say uh, tell you this uh, main observation that t implies u if and only if for all uh, for all positive n chi n t is greater than or equal to chi n a u so you see that we have a way a way of weighing here which satisfies h p and h p minus because if u implies psi n it means that if uh, chi n a u is one then t should also prove psi n, it says that chi n t should be one too, okay? And finally, let V of t be this one, be this uh, number between zero and one, this uh, binary expansion of this uh, chi n t. For this one, we have that both HP and EP. If t implies u, then t weigh more than u, and if they weigh the same, then they are logically equivalent. Okay, I uh, wrote this paper, sent to a, a, to a couple of good journals. The second journal, which took five months, I got this referral report here, which I read it here. The article is not written rigorously, hence it is not easy to assess its merits, if any. For example, the abstract gives no technical information about the article, uh, but this part is correct because my abstract here is written actually journalistically, not uh, scientifically, which says that it would be a heavenly reward if there were a method of weighing theories and sentences so that the theory could never prove a heavier sentence. This is Scheidt's heuristic principle. Alas, no satisfactory measure has been found and this dream seemed too good to ever come true. Here in that article, we attempt to revive Shaitan's last paradise of heuristic principle as much as logic allows. All claims are formalized in an imprecise manner as the theories used are not specified. I recommend rejection. I don't, uh, I don't know if you notice the hatred that I feel in these lines, but anyway, I don't uh, expect to get better uh, referral reports uh, so uh, actually for the, in the near future. 
And the last quarter of my talk will be on uh, the halting probability uh, discovered by Scheiting. Scheiting writes this formula, omega, which has been ex exaggerated uh, even in the neosciences in many, very many uh, uh, journals and books and so on, which even uh, Martin Gardner wrote that, that this omega uh, contains all the mysteries of the universe, something like that. It is defined this way, two to the minus of the length of P for the programs P that halts. But this has uh, lots of uh, actually uh, uh, sub-definitions, let me say. A random Z, uh, binary string may not be the ASCII code of any program. Even if it is, then it may not be input free. So here we consider binary strings, with, which are the code of input free programs. And then we consider if they halt after running or not. We have an input free program, okay? We start uh, running it, and then we see if it stops eventually or not. So omega is actually defined like this. For all binary strings, which are the ASCII codes of input free programs, then we add up this, uh, these values to, 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 to the power of the minus length of P, if that P halts eventually after running. Why this is the probability of halting or halting probability is questionable that, uh, that I will consider in, uh, in, in the next few minutes. Actually, we, we have a partial agreement with Shaiti in the sense that the probability of getting a fixed binary string of length n by passing a fair cone uh, whose one side is zero and the other one is two to the minus one. Actually, is one over two to the power of n because there are two n uh, binary strings of length n. Okay, if you take just one of them and you want to see what is the probability of getting that string, then then you get just one over two n to the power of n. And the halting probability of programs with size n is the number of halting programs with size n, the number of all binary strings with size n. So which is the, uh, the number of binary programs which halt and have size n over to the two to the power of n. Because the, since there are two n binary strings of size n. So the halting probability of programs with size n is exactly this one. 2 to the, uh, to the minus of the length of P for P's that halt and have length N, actually here. Actually, because 2 to the minus N for, for this number. Here, here it is correct. So denote this number by omega N. So the number of halting programs with size N is exactly 2N times omega N. And now what we think uh, that, uh, that could be an error is that when Shaitin wants to compute the probability of, of halting the programs with size less than or equal to this big N, he adds up these omega Ns here for uh, little Ns from one to the big N for this one. And for the halting probability, he adds all of them. He adds omega one, omega two, omega three, omega four, and so on till infinity. And then he uh, gets this formula, which is called omega, uh, and he's the Omega man, and so on. But we believe that this is an error because the halting probability of programs with size less than or equal to N is in fact, we have also learned it in uh, maybe in <clears throat> high school or in, uh, in the college, in the undergraduate program, that the number of halting programs with size less than or equal to big N over the number of all binary strings with size less than or equal to N. We can compute this one. This is this one all the uh, strings with size uh, less than or equal to big N. There are two N strings of length N, this little N, from one to N. And we computed this also, that it, it, we saw that uh, there are, the number of halting program with size uh, little N is two N omega N, and we add them up from one to this big N. Now it is a calculus exercise actually, the, the freshman exercise to notice that for sufficiently large ends, these two are not equal to each other. This fraction 
You cannot cancel out these two ends and then get omega ends, even in the limit. Their limit is also not equal. And I am not giving you the proofs here. <clears throat> and I refer to the, you to our joint paper there in the archive that I that, that, that I, I showed you. Okay, this is the uh, actually one of the last slides. So what is the possible mistake? The number omega was meant to be, this is Shaitin's words. The probability that a computer program whose bits are generated one by one by independent passes of a fail cone will eventually halve. This is the definition of omega. As pointed out by Shaitin, this series that he has written, that he has written, could be uh, greater than one or even may, uh, uh, may be infinite. If the set of programs is not taken to be what, what we call prefix free, prefix free means that no extension of a valid program is a valid program. So no prefix of a program is a program. One of the ways to make sure that this happens is to, uh, to, to write begin, big begin, and big end, capital begin, and capital end at the beginning and end of the program. So no prefix of a program can be programmed so because it begins with the command begin, but it doesn't end with the command end. Chaitin actually said in one of his lectures, which, which became a paper later, that it took 10 years until he got it right. So the fact that for del delimiting programs, means delimiting uh, is another word for prefix free, that this real number lies between zero and one by Kraft's inequality, which says that uh, this uh, number is uh, less than or equal to one for any prefix free set S, does not make it the probability of anything. If you have a number between zero and one, it doesn't mean that it is a probability of, of an event. It is just a, it is just a number between zero and one. So any solutions? I have uh, actually we have uh, proposed two solutions. One of them is the conditional probability that if you insist on having this one, you should divide that uh, number by uh, uh, this omega p, when p is the set of all programs. So here we get a measure here, uh, which I have sh shown by upside down omega, and which satisfies Kolmogorov's axioms of probability. So for uh, if uh, we insist on, on having this measure, then we should divide Shaitin's omega by a, a computable number, which is omega p, and it is less than one. I have we have shown in that paper that it is less than one, so uh, that uh, the whole thing probability with this probability measure will be bigger than omega. But what we uh, actually I personally think that uh, is the real whole thing probability is the asymptotic probability. It says that count HN, the number of halting programs, the, string that, the strings that code some input-free programs that eventually halt after running, that have integer codes less than or equal to N. What is integer code? Uh, you uh, list all binary strings here, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, and so on. And then you uh, actually enumerate them. Uh, you, you give one uh, to this uh, string, number two to this, this string, number three to this one. So these are the string codes and these are uh, binary strings. Uh, sorry, these are integer codes and these are string codes. Then define the whole thing probably to be the limit if, that it, uh, if the limit exists. And I don't know if it exists or not. Or we can take also this limit. This is actually a sub, uh, sub uh, sequence of this one. Uh, it uh, actually computes the probability of halting for programs with uh, le whose lengths are less than or equal to this big N when that big N goes to infinity, if the limit exists. I don't know if it exists or not, but if it exists, <clears throat> it can be shown that it is less than or equal to half of omega. So with this measure, if we want to compute the halting probability, it will be not greater than uh, half of omega, and in this case, it will be greater than omega. In sum, omega is not the whole thing probability by any measure or by the supposed measures 
Well, actually, this measure hasn't been uh, hasn't been sub suggested in the literature, but this measure ha has been mentioned in many places that I have cited some of them in that preprint. Finally, <clears throat> thank you again for uh, having me here. It was a great pleasure to, uh, to meet you, to meet the organizers, to meet uh, Professor Parikh, actually virtually at least, and I, I hope physically so someday. And thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, thank you. Very nice. Um, so you never published that paper or you just got one bad review or, or, or was it published someplace else? Just... Oh, oh uh, I forgot to mention. Mm -hmm. I have got referee reports for this one, which are much more horrible than that, that one that I showed to you. <laughs> mm. I haven't been able to publish. I have just put it as an archive preprint for people to read. Perfect. Good. Anyways, any questions, any comments, any discussion? And any disagreements, please, that, 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 I, that I know what, what is wrong here. Well, I, I, I just want to say in defense of, uh, you have a, a nice way of getting an infinite set, um, set of sentences that are true but unprovable from classical girdle, but, um, if Chaitin, if it was correct, that would be in one step, there would be, you know, it would, it would somehow characterize a lot of them. So that's uh, just an interesting thing. But Well, uh, his claim that his, his result is stronger could be true if his sentences were uh, kind of algorithmically construct, uh, constructible, let me say. <laughs> That you have mm -hmm. an algorithm right. which gives you an infinitely many sentences in one press. Goodell's proof gives you infinitely many sentences, but not in one press, in uh, progressively, one by one. Okay. But here we prove that there are infinitely, cofinitely, actually, I would say stronger. In my papers, uh, both of them I have written cofinitely. It is stronger than infinitely. If you look at uh, in probability theoretic way, infinite, for example, uh, even numbers are infinite, but they are not cofinite, right? Right. Odd numbers are infinite, but they are not cofinite. We have cofinitely many true sentences in one breath, but we know just their existence. We know that they exist somewhere. Go find them. And there is no algorithm. We prove that here. There is no algorithm to find one single of them, any single mm -hmm. one of them. I understand. It, I, we can say that it is, in a sense, stronger, but in in many more senses, weaker. Sure. Right, but right. Well, see, because it seems that the difference is that he has, you know, that length. So I guess in in you know, as you mentioned, certainly by iterating, you know, from it's easy to go from girdle serum to an infinite set of sentences. However, you know, here he has the any sentence of that length. Is there a way to go from Girdle's theorem to that, or is that where it's, you know, as you said, not stronger or weaker, just different, and perhaps necessarily uncomputable? Oh, well, this is a very good point, actually. And uh, one of the sources of this uh, heuristic, the mistakes that he committed on heuristic principle, you see, this CT, okay, depends mm -hmm. on T. Uh, we, mm -hmm. we write it like this to show that it depends on T. But it does not say anything about these cofinitely many sigmas. Mm -hmm. So we know that, of course, the lengths of sigmas are uh, be bigger than CT, but are much, much more uh, actually be bigger than CT. So they are very complicated sigmas, cofinitely many of them. Okay, they are cofinitely many of them, uh, complicated. And for them, these uh, sentences are true but unprovable. But these sigmas, there is no algorithm that can find any one of those sigmas. Mm -hmm. this, this can be proved that. And those, uh, and actually, we can <clears throat> compute CT. We cannot compute any of these sigmas here. So you can you say that okay, I have my theory T. Give me one of those unprovable sentences. 
-hmm. We can give you good sentences constructively. We can write it down. Oh, this is this, this one. But we mm -hmm. cannot find any single of these shaitan. These are called shaitan sentences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's very nice, very nice. But the point is that incompleteness theorem is true, actually. But neither are heuristic principle or nor the high, the halting probability, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? Otherwise, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna stop. Hmm. Uh, well, thank you. Um, may I ask a question? Um, um, you said CT is computable. Um, can you get any information about the size of CT? Well, yes, yes. Actually, uh, this has fascinated many people. One of uh, uh, them is Solovey. You know, uh, may maybe Pari uh, Professor Parik knows, knows him well. Solovey has, uh, has uh, written a paper about this one. Um, in the sense that, uh, you see, there is an enumeration of programs, a good coding, let's say, such that the C of ZFC is zero. So it has no information at all. And this is this is one of the points of Ratikaine, who attacks shiting very violently, very ruthlessly, very mercilessly, that any theory can have a very small Shaitian uh, constant or characteristic constant, but it does not give you any information, let alone information of the universe. I, I if think... you want to search on... Yes, yes, please. I think Solovey also has a paper that you can't get one bit of big omega. You you can't. Yes, know. exactly. I, I, yes, I, I wanted to to say the title of his his uh, actually his paper. Yes, uh, he also talks about omega, and he says that yes, there is an enumeration by which you can find any uh, digit, any single digit of the decimal decimal expansion of omega, which is correct, of course. I agree with his results. My point is that that omega, which is a fascinating number, is not halting probability. It is random, it is uncomputable, it has many interesting properties. Many other numbers have these interesting properties, but this omega is not the halting probability. It can be called Shaitin's constant. Very well, very and correct. But this is not a probability because it is between zero and one doesn't make it a probability. Anyways, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Let me say it is very nice, very nice. Um, thank you. Uh, the, um, we're going to be talking uh, in, I think, two weeks. We're going to have another session. I'll send out an email. Anyways, I want to just thank everyone for showing up, and uh, thank you. Uh, you're, you're always welcome. Thanks okay. a lot. Sayed, I'll we'll see you. Take care. Uh, sure, thanks. See you too. Okay, okay, take care. Yeah.